Today I want to show you the import process, but I also have another thing I want to show you what's very interesting, the clustering and how it looks and works. So as you can see here now, um, you can see the um, meshes are subdivided in different clusters and they um, here you can see they depend on the camera distance. That's actually that's the old Octree system, but it still shows the effect. Later there will be the DAC tree, which I'm currently working on. And for example, we could rotate this mesh here, and you can see that the clustering still adapt to the to the camera and the movement. And yeah, we can also visualize this like this here, for example. Basically, it's it's the same. Yeah, the the flickering comes because the I'm updating the vertices every frame. Later, we don't have to do this, but but in this debug version here, I'm updating it. And yeah, that's that's uh, very interesting, I think. And also. Um, behind this mesh you can see in the scene view that um, that the objects are not getting rendered when I'm behind this here you can see here you can also try put this next to each other here you can see well it's this is a bit buggy because you can't run both views at the same time um, so to get the, the right result actually um, yeah, it's better to switch between the views yeah that's that's um, that's it for the clustering I think and the the next step is now to have a look at the import process and how that works Today I want to import the ZBrush model here into a nano mesh. First let's create a folder in um, Unity. Create folder. That's the name of the mesh. So this one is empty here. And now we just export this one, the folder. An FBX. Good. So now we get a uh, info here in Unity um, from a file watcher, um, and this popped up. It's a custom Im importer. Uh, the, the UI is not uh, ready. It's just a placeholder UI, um, but it already works. So now we just press import the mesh. I or the FBX I copied here is currently not uh, imported in Unity as you can see here because I turned off the auto refresh. So now when I press import it now starts to import the FBX and after that it will automatically convert um, the nano mesh. We could also we could also copy it in an external folder and the file reader could also detect this. I, I like to try this so we could use an um, FBX importer to import um, the external mesh so we don't have to copy the FBX into the into the models folder here into the assets folder. So this will take a few minutes. So now we are back and the mesh was imported um, here into this nano mesh uh, external folder outside of the assets folder and um, now the textures I just will use these textures here because the ZBrush model has no textures applied. Now we can drag and drop here this prefab that was also created. Later we don't need this prefab. This is just currently for the this old Octree version. Um, there we need uh, um, like a bounding box. So this is how the, the mesh um, this is 
that's how, how the mesh looks um, currently and um, but we we are not going to render it uh, as the as the usual way we just drag and drop it uh, into this put it here um, so this manager here it's not so the final version it's not tidied up it's not organized there's a lot of things in there that are not used anymore so you actually can forget about this this is just here a list where I put all the objects maybe later I will just um, use a nano mesh component here so the system will <coughs> recognize the, this transformation and um, get the material here for the mesh because we, we don't need the mesh render anymore we just need the re mesh render for the material because we want to use this material so let's um, just get extract the material here <coughs> so now we can also apply our textures we can have a look how, how it looks with these textures it's a bit dark yeah that's that's basically it um, we can we can now um, turn this off again also this one we don't need and then but we can still uh, change these parameters here in this HDRP lit shader we can we wh what we have to do now is to um, convert the textures to virtual textures we can do this here generate virtual textures maybe this will come together with the import process I think that would be the best way that also import dialog will pop up okay so now um, after um, the import um, we now could render the thing about the virtual textures or the process that that I used is just subdividing the texture in pages or smaller tiles so they can get streamed in we don't need the complete texture at all the time so we're using sub tiles for the texturing so this looks good as we can see here the clustering is working and and yeah we have our our texture or our material applied we now have this nano the shade applied but um, in the in the final version this will be an HDRP lit shader because at the moment only the first mesh gets this and when we for example when we render with the other meshes this one will get the, the global shader doesn't have to stay on on the on the object but that's so now when we for example when we select this here and um, maybe we should scale it a bit bigger you can see it's here it's, it's a normal HRP lid um, shader um, of course here the, the textures are the, or the UVs are not correct here that's why it looks like this here we we got our mesh imported now and we can we can move it around and um, the clusters will adapt to the to the position so this last part here you can see this is just a test mesh and I'm testing um, the deck tree system currently improving and I want to uh, replace the deck tree system with the oak tree and basically subdivides the mesh in partitions and they all should get about the same amount of triangles and um, so the mesh is better balanced and the rendering will be faster so the number of cut edges is minimized um, that's the idea and it already works but there are a few parts that are that needs to be merging for example here uh, just merging um, 
where where some ar arrow or two small partitions happening I can just merge them together one or two weeks and then I can use this uh, partitioning system and use the DAG tree system yeah I think that's it and I uh, hope um, you have a better insight now and understand what's going on have a nice day bye